Hello and welcome to Panther the Geeks. You're joining me for a new series of videos that we're going to be doing on bolt action. Um, as you can see here, I've got in front of me Campaign C line because this is where I'm going to start, which is weirdly at the end because I've already done some of the other videos which I've not put on the channel yet. Um, as you can see, we've got Campaign C line and we've got the miniature that comes with that, which is Winston Churchill himself, which is cool. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to just go and quickly through the Campaign C line. I'm also going to talk about some bolt action stuff that I've already done. I haven't put it on the channel yet, and uh, explain why. So, first off, before we have a look at the campaign, Sea Lion book, um, I've been wanting to do bolt action for a little while, but I've wanted to do some like early German uh, forces and some British expeditionary forces, sort of refight the early part of the war, Dunkirk as well, Poland, France, and there's a book for that, that's uh, Germany Strikes, I haven't got that yet actually. Uh, but that's sort of the area I'm going to go for. But then this came out, Campaign Sea Lion, and I thought it was a good opportunity to play sort of an alternate uh, history of the war. Because obviously, Campaign's uh, Operation Sea Lion never took place. Um, there was a sequel to this book, and we'll do that in another video. I haven't got that yet either. But uh, what's happened is, we, myself and Claire, looked at uh, getting some bolt action stuff. Claire's got some Russians, because we we're going to do some Operation Barbarossa type stuff. And I got some uh, German pioneers, at uh, which time I didn't know anything about bolt action. I just wanted to get some of the models, see if I liked them first, paint them up, and then if I did like them, that's what we we're going to do. Continue with the, the series and so on. So it's been a bit just bit sort of disjointed. And in the future videos that you see, uh, there's a lot of things that I've, I say I'm going to take that should not change my mind. Now I've got the German uh, army book. I can see what I can't take, what I can't take. So a lot of amendments are going to be made to the future videos that you've seen, uh, you've not seen yet, sorry. Um, so a lot of them have got inaccuracies, on, so, but they are still unboxing, so you still get to see how the miniatures go together. So I'm going to still put them up on the channel. I was in two minds on whether just to start again, but I put them all up. Um, but this is the first video I wanted to do where it sort of explained why the other videos that follow this might be a bit disjointed, but will get make more sense when it comes to the end. So, Campaign Sea Line, what's this? Uh, well, first off, as I said, we've got a Winston Churchill model. I will undo that at the end of the video and we'll have a look at that. Uh, there's nothing really to put together than stick into a base and take that flash off. But let's have a look at the book itself. So, Campaign Sea Line, it was uh, Hitler's plan, or the German plan, Nazi plan, shall we say, to attack Britain after uh, the defeat at Dunkirk and after taking France and Poland and all those other countries the idea was they would invade Britain um, it never happened obviously but this uh, gives you some of the history history of Operation Sea Line and we have some cool artwork as well um, in the so we have the alternate timeline I will show you this bit because it's quite interesting so this actually starts in 1932 long before the defeat at Dunkirk um, which is a great film by the way, go and watch it. Um, and then it goes through to October 35, all the way through to May 1940, when Norway and Sweden signed a neutrality pact. And then we have the expeditionary force defeated Dunkirk, and all the way through to September 1940, where using French and Italian naval assets, they invade Britain. So there's a lot of different things that's happened in this. It's not just a case of what would have happened if Hitler had just decided, yeah, I'm going to actually invade. Britain without having to defeat them in the Battle of Britain. A lot of the things happened, Winston Churchill in this version of events wasn't the Prime Minister as soon as he was. He is eventually, but he wasn't as soon as he was. Uh, the King instead of the Queen, because uh, it was Edward, I think, who's uh, who's the King, King Edward. He was, he was never uh, forced to uh, abdicate his throne, basically. So we've got a pro, sort of, possible pro, hmm? uh, German sort of uh, king and uh, a rather weaker shall we say uh, government than we had in reality uh, which leads to less preparation for war the decision to sink the French fleet doesn't happen therefore the Germans have access to that and there's a lot of other little things that contribute to Operation Sea Lion taking place that said it's still not a done deal and it's still there's a lot of to and fro in the way that they've actually done it and they've explained how it may have happened and it doesn't all go the Germans way either it would have been a very difficult invasion but um, it gives you some background what happens during the invasion the imaginary one shall we say 
And then you've even got a map here, which shows where the spearhead was from Calais to uh, to Strand here, Limpin Airfield. And then we have uh, Bexhill and Warmington on Sea, obviously. Anyone who's a fan of Dad's Army will know what Warmington on Sea is. And there are rules for them in this book as well, updated ones. So it gives you an idea of the landing force for Germany. Um, so these are sorts of precision kits that are actually in the pictures. I do plan on getting some eventually, but finances dictates when that'll be. Um, from now on, I might have to just fight the land battles. <laughs> or maybe you stand in for the invasion fleet. So we've got some good uh, pictures of the German soldiers here, pioneers and the sort of emblems that they were. And then we have a very cool sort of churchyard. So, you know, I'd love to see the actual table that some of these pictures are taken from. And then theatre selectors. So we have British regular army reinforced tank platoons from what you can take there. We have the British regular army infantry reinforced platoons, British regular army anti-parachutist light infantry patrols with all the different options we've got in there as well. Uh, British Army Coastal Defence, Reinforced Platoon, all given different sort of combinations of things. British Army Airfield Defence, all better in a ball for his gun. Very tempted to do that, I do like that model. Uh, Urban Militia Patrol Reinforcement Platoon, there we go. So a lot more civilians and stuff coming into this. And then we have uh, Water Patrols, Women's Federation, <laughs> The on guard, all the uh, lots and lots of different uh, versions of armies to use, and then we have the new British units. Um, so we've got Royal Navy units here, Royal Navy headquarters and naval selections, local defence volunteer units. We have Shire patrollers, Water Patrol leaders, uh, Madame President, infantry, urban militia patrols. Veteran of Mr. Trillers, Boy Scouts, every possible conceivable person who could be defending the British Isles. Um, Shire patrols, water patrols, veteran water patrols, club shooting teams, some of them have got longbows, that's quite interesting. Then we've got the Home Guard units, and uh, the Legends of Britain. So, yeah, we have the individual rules for the Dad's Army, Warmington on Sea patrols, old volunteer selections. Uh, volunteers Vickers team, auxiliary units. Um, so here we have the uh, the rules for the auxiliary units. Section D's of MI16 intelligence sections. So we even have um, Peter Fleming here, Ian Fleming's brother. We have uh, rules basically using a James Bond esque character if we want to. So there's a lot of fun in this book. It's not it's not a serious <laughs> in a lot of ways. I got obsolete artillery there, Smith guns, improvised artillery. A lot of these miniatures are appearing on the uh, Warlord Games website. And vehicles the Mark C Hornet, the Vickers Medium, a tank, tank destroyers, the usual kind of things that we see self propelled armadillo, uh, anti aircraft vehicles, the B Rep, the uh, Guy Armour car. That's a cool little thing, the civilian wagon. That looks pretty awesome. Um, and there we go. So lots of options. Oh, the great... Uh, I don't even know how you say that. Panjandrum. Panjandrum. Basically a rocket-powered wheel. So yeah, that's a wooden kit on the website as well. If anyone's interested in that. I think you get two of them in the kit and one of the mad scientist type blocks. Again, it's from an episode of Dad's Army, that one. Uh, new British weapons, so sort of old fashioned improvised uh, guns, and then we've got the Lewis gun there. And then we've got longbows, longbows with fire arrows. Uh, we have sub artillery, the Smith gun, a North Over projector, a spigot mortar, Winnie and Pooh, improvised artillery, and armoured trains, so rules for that as well. Rules for fortifications. And again, some of the you can get these kits off the website. I think it, yeah, so it just does pillboxes, robot. I think uh, I remember TT Combat does like a range as well. I'll have to have a look at them. Um, 
rules for minefields, all the rules that have been some of the other books as well, minefields, etc. Clearing minefields. And now we have the German invasion forces with the beach landing reinforced platoons. This is where I've selected my current German army from. It's also like an early German army. So there'll be two RNG teams in there. And I'll go into what I've selected, the points, costs of armies, a bit later on after the painted. And we can have a good look at uh, probably a showcase video for the, for the painted models, what I've taken in the army. Uh, German paratroopers as well. That's a cool little army idea. Uh, Brandenburg infiltration commandos, airborne raiders. Then we have the British Union of Fascists. So we've got Oswald Mosley in there as well. He's an actual character from history. Uh, yes. And, uh, new German units, Brandenburg units. Got the fifth columnists, so yeah. I think that one of these models is a, is one of the Oswald Mosley models. I think that's just an officer or like a group leader or whatever they call them in the uh, the traitors, of, as I call them anyway. Uh, now we have special German invasion equipment, invasion barges. So we've got different types of invasion barge. Although interestingly, Type A is our one you're really going to see on the board, which is this one here which was in that other picture. I think it's the stern bolt, which is a smaller one. The two are just included for, um, if we can complete this really, but they wouldn't actually be on the board because they're much bigger transports. So they drop much further out to sea. Uh, yeah, the stern boot, the salt bolts. That's the other one. And then amphibious tanks. So, uh, Panzer twos, the light tanks, I do have one of those now. There is a video on that. I just haven't uploaded it yet. Um, they can be used as amphibious tanks, which is quite interesting. They'll just be fit with flotation devices. And there's no extra points in the game, which just means they can come on to the shore from, from the water basically because they're dropped by one of the bigger invasion barges. And then we have the Toff Panzer. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, I'm probably not. As an under Wasset Panzer or a U Panzer. So those are like Panzer 3s, Panzer 4s, but for those you actually have to roll for them. So why is it that tank on the board? Um, there's a chance it might not even turn up for the entire game. So that's why I went for a Panzer 2, because at least you know they're going to turn up. Uh, gliders. And then the... Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to murder that name though. But there's light and heavy versions. New special rules. So this covers all the special rules involved in the game. Then we have the set of scenarios. So we start with uh, patrol scenarios, which are I think about 500 point armies in smaller sort of setups. I kind of like that idea. Uh, sort of mainly infantry fighting off against each other. And that's when you can use like your secret agents and stuff like that to better effect. And then you have like proper battles, battles on the beaches of Kent. That's like a proper sort of a amphibious assault going on. And then battle scenario assault. I'm missing one there. Here it was. Patrol raiding His Majesty's Armoury. Battle scenario assault on Olympian Airfield. Uh, patrol scenario Luftwaffe down. Uh, battle scenario, capture the fort. Uh, if you want to refight the, because obviously the map up there, you've got quite a few buildings and it's like a town's being split up. Um, that'd be a really good one to refight though. Something I might want to do in the future, but I need a lot more scenery to do that. Um, take out the roadblock, a lot more straightforward. Basically just a road and a roadblock and some trees and some fields and done. That's going to be a lot more straightforward to actually fight. Uh, battle scenario, hedgehog. Patrol scenario, kill Churchill. This is where having the Churchill model will come in handy because you actually use him in the game. Um, so you set him up in the middle, and basically one side is attempting to kill him, and the other side is attempting to save him. Pretty straightforward. And there he is, Legends of Britain. 185 points in the game. Um, comes with a submachine gun and pistols. 
pistols are for the branch policemen. Um, I'm not sure they're actually branch policemen in the, in the picture. I think that's uh, Manor in, in uh, Civvies as the bank clerk. <laughs> Quite an interesting model to use for that, actually. Uh, so, plain clothes, special branch, man, yeah. And there he is, that's the model I'll show you at the end in a minute. And then we have the filthy fifth and the campaign. So, how to run a campaign. So, basically, whoever wins the most battles wins by a variance. So, if you win points difference is 0 to 5, it's a draw. Word if you've got 25 points more in, in the campaign, it's a crushing victory. Anywhere in between. And then just a quick brief explanation why it never actually happened in history. Um, mainly because it was unfeasible. <laughs> Completely unfeasible to actually invade Britain. Um, they just didn't have the votes, they didn't have control of the channel. And there's a lot of other reasons why it could never really have happened. Uh, in the, Well, given our own history anyway. Um, but it does a very good job of giving an excuse for the Germans to invade but it doesn't give them like massive amounts of upper hand in it either because it's a very weak invasion force at land so there's a good battle going on and Britain's got a lot more um, tanks and stuff being made at the time obviously we saved a lot of people from Dunkirk as well so we had pretty good armies there so that is a uh, quick, very quick overview of Campaign Sea Line. You're going to see probably more of this when we get around to playing some of the games. It'll be a little while yet. I have painted a lot of the German army, but I'm only just uh, starting on the Expeditionary Force and the early British uh, stuff that I'm going to be getting. So stay tuned for some more videos on that. Um, now let's uh, have a look at uh, Winston Churchill. There he is. Let's open up this uh, this little uh, package. So yeah, you get the free models with the books if you buy them directly from uh, Warlord Games. Something I didn't realise at first, to be honest, because the Tank War book, uh, second edition of the rules, and the German Army's book, I all got as digital copies. Um, so I didn't get any of the free models, unfortunately. They were cheaper, but... Uh, it's quite useful to have them on computer, but I didn't get any three models, but I had to have the Winston Churchill model. There he is. So we'll just uh, we'll tidy that up, we'll take that flash off. I'll stick him to his base. I'll be back in a second, we'll have a proper look at him. Okay, so there he is. Man himself. Yeah, it's, all, it's a cool little free model, so I just super glued myself to the base as well. Yay! Good going there, Paul. There he is. Very cool. Right, so as I said, uh, I'm new to belt action. Claire's new to belt action. Uh, so we're kind of learning at the moment, um, especially on what to build. And one of the reasons I wanted to do operation, the campaign sea line first was um, one of the historical games come in I get a bit well we're geeks me and Claire are geeks that's, that's kind of implied by the channel name so we kind of like it to be historically accurate and I was getting really bogged down in what I can have what I shouldn't have for the early war thing and at least with campaign sea line it's a little bit lighter because it's not real it's something that uh, never actually happened so some of the units you can use a little bit of a uh, poetic license shall we say in there so that's uh, why I've chosen to start with this um, I'll put them probably move on to Germany strikes and uh, some of the proper historical ones because I've got a hankering to do um, Desert Armies as well the um, Africa Corps and the Desert Rats uh, the 8th Army um, as well um, so you might see them in the future so we'll see how it goes and as I said there's a lot of the bolt action videos that we've done and they're going to go up after this one so um, there's no chronological order to them just it'll be the order I put them up in I'll probably put all my German stuff up first Maybe then my British, and then maybe then Claire's Russians. Because uh, she's, as I said, collecting the Russian side of it. Um, and uh, she's also collecting Japan, but she doesn't have any of their forces yet. So I've got a little Axis and Allies thing going on there. 
So there we go. So thanks for watching this video. I know it's been a bit of a, an odd one because I, it's the first time I've looked at bolt action. And um, please, please stay tuned for some more if you want to see some bolt action stuff. That would be great. Uh, it's not going to take away from the main stuff though, so it'll be as and when we do it. We're still going to be doing um, Test of Honor. There we go. Another Warlord Games thing. Uh, we're going to be going back to that, doing that. Because I've got some massive darkness to do. Uh, a little bit of 40k and some Age of Sigma coming up as well. But uh, as I said, Test of Honor is going to be one of the priorities now to go back to that. Now we've finished with our main bulk of 40k videos for the moment. Uh, other than the unboxings that we always do, uh, that's all you're going to see from that for a while. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for some more of that. So please like and subscribe, helps out loads. And hopefully we'll see you again soon, guys. Take care and bye for now.